a few stories about Peter the rock climber that I knew. And typical of Pete, the, my first recollection of him is when he um, published an article in a climbing magazine listing the t hardest routes in the Pennines. And we'd never heard of this bloke. We were the established team at the time. Suddenly this guy appears from nowhere and top of the list are routes by Pete Livesey, Pete Livesey, Pete Livesey. And right down at the bottom was Tom Proctor and Jack, Jack Street and all that. And you think, who the hell is this bloke? <laughs> Anyway, some time later, climbing walls were just starting to emerge, and Tom Proctor and I went up to Rothwell one night, because we'd heard that was the latest state-of-the-art climbing wall in a gymnasium, and I was sat on a ledge near the top of this very high wall, thinking, well, how do I get down from here now? And this bloke climbed up the wall and just said, hello, he says, I'm Peter Lipsy. <laughs> and so that's how I met Peter. And, um, and he was very cheeky, lad. Like and then some time later, I was doing a first ascent of Twicker at Millstone with Tom Proctor, and I was second in the upper slab, just doing a very difficult mantle shelf. And a complete stranger looked over the edge and he said, Pete Lives has just done the free, first free ascent of Cave Route at Gordale. And you think, and you're like, what's going on here? You know, I just, and what I didn't realise is that somehow this stranger knew that there was a game on. And Pete was into games. He liked to be where the game was, you know. Um, and in some respects, I, I don't think he ever truly came over from, the tr from tra track athletics to the rather romantic amateurism of rock climbing, where he didn't look upon it as a sport. It was a way of life. And, and for Pete, there's something else. There's another edge to it all the time. And he liked the game. And in fact, I recall once that Ron and myself and, and Al Evans, we drove down to Cheddar midweek. And Pete just turned up out of the blue, didn't he? I mean, he must have heard we were going. And he thought, there's a game on. I'm going. <laughs> he just, just arrives. <laughs> he's, um, he's often been credited with having invented training for rock climbing. And Pete always denied this strenuously. And I think what he did, I mean, people have been trained for rock climbing for many years. And I think what Pete did do is he brought a new attitude to training and rock climbing. And... And in that respect, uh, I think he had a major influence. And he, he, he turned up at Rubicon Wall one day. And um, he started running up and down. And I just thought, what's he bloody doing, this bloke? He's completely crackers. And he, but he was doing what he would do at a race meet. He was warming up. And it never occurred to us that. It was, it was just typical of Pete. <laughs> anyway. Um, I think what's the mate? You know, as many people will say today, he was Captain Cool Pete. He was never ruffled he, in any situation, whether it be social or in a dangerous situation. And I remember in 1975 or 6, Easter, we were in Cornwall, and, um, and he, was doing a, he was doing a move where he had his arm right out there, and his shoulder just popped out. He just literally, the, the whole lump, you could see this thing, and he just fell off. And now, uh, anybody else would have gone to hospital and had a month off work, but Pete went out the next day and did a new route the next day. He's just, he's just extraordinary, man. Um, and then another time we were at a, an international meet at Plassey Brennan in 1976, courtesy of the BMC. And um, Tom and Al Manson and myself, we were trying a new route on the Ed Wall of Vector. And um, we failed on it, <laughs> uh, which was a mistake because Pete was around. And uh, a couple of days later, he slid in and grabbed it and he called it cream. And I never forgave him for that. <laughs> and... Um, Finally, got my revenge on him by pinching more clocks of ret off him and behemoth, which he was desperately trying to do. And then I got a copy of Mountain Magazine and found that Pete had somehow managed to write to Ken Wilson and get the credit for the first uninspected ascent by Pete Livesey. <laughs> oh, that's, that's Pete. <laughs> um, there was a time in, we were down in, Pete was always one step ahead of everybody. And we were in Yosemite in 1977, a whole gang of us, I mean, there's, you know, Ron and Pete and Flory and Pricey and, you know, just a big mob of us. And, um, and then one day he said, come on, we're going to go under this route because the, low, the lower section of the Yosemite Falls had dried up. And so the wall opposite, Carbon Wall, was dry, which was unusual. 
And we got there, and he was on it, and eventually we found out he'd abseiled down his 500-foot route the day before. And none of us knew, he just sneaked off, and he'd run up there, ab down, and he'd sussed it out, he'd come. And he was off, <laughs> typically peaked one step ahead. And um, the following year, I went to America again with Peter and his brother Alec, and we, the object was to drive across the desert, taking in big sandstone areas and arriving in Boulder. Um, and on the way, we were in Yosemite, and it was about 100 degrees centigrade. We were down the valley, and there was a big wall, which had got big chicken heads on it, this thing. And it was about 300 foot high, and it, we were so hot, we were just going purple with the heat. And he knew that, that um, Alex Sharp had failed to lead it a few days before, and Pete just set off and soloed it. And halfway up, I was looking, and he was just, it was rocking forwards and backwards. And I thought, oh, gosh, God, I really thought he was going to fall off. And then he soloed down some meagre hard VS on the right, you know, and, and I said, I thought you were going to fall off. He said, oh, no, 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 I was fine. So I, was just gonna, I thought I was going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pete, you know. And then we, got, we, we went and bummed a, a bed for the night off Royal Robins in Telluride and went up to Crack Canyon, which is at eight or 9,000 feet, and we were doing something which would be about VS on standage. But it was very, very, at that altitude, suddenly, it was very difficult even climbing at that standard. And then we were doing another route to the right, and... But Pete was about 100 foot up, and Royal just, and it's like a big slanting groove like you get on the West Butchers of Cloggy. And Royal just very mischievously said, Hey Pete, why don't you swing out right? And he was just winding him up, and Pete went, Oh, okay. And he just went out of this old rainy wall, up the head wall, and finished with no more rooms for 50 foot. New route. And you just think, Wow. <laughs> you know, he's just superb. So we won't mention anything about the chip toll on claws at Kilns Heath, <laughs> or the one on Golden Mile. <laughs> Or the one on Golden Mile. <laughs> and certainly not the savagely brushed holes on Downhill Race at Fraggart. I'll not mention any of those. <laughs> and according to the Times this week, Pete was a stickler for the absolute truth. Well, <laughs> John Sheard and I were laughing about this on the phone. And John said, there you go, he's still doing it, even after he's gone. <laughs>